Tonight, in keeping with the latest guidance from the CDC to avoid gatherings of more than 10 people, I'm speaking to you from my home in Wilmington, Delaware. And I hope all of you are staying safe. Talking and taking the recommended, the recommended precautions and talking to the docs, you, if you have one, to keep your social distance, to slow the spread of this virus. This pandemic has impacted every aspect of our lives and every aspect of this campaign. But most of all, my heart goes out to all of those of you who have lost a loved one, to those who have contracted the virus, to all the brave Americans who are working harder than ever to help their neighbors, and all those children that are home from school that are worried and don't know quite why. Doctors, nurses, EMTs, and public health officials, as well as the frontline emergency workers like firefighters and dedicated folks working to keep the shelves stocked in the grocery stores. You know, tackling this pandemic is a national emergency akin to fighting a war. And it's going to require leadership and cooperation from every level of government. And it's going to require us to move thoughtfully and decisively to quickly address both the public health crisis as well as the economic crisis. It's going to require us to pay attention to the medical and scientific and health experts. And it's going to require each of us to do our part. Yes, this is a moment where we need our leaders to lead, but it's also a moment where the choices and decisions we make as individuals are going to collectively impact on what happens, make a big difference in the severity of this outbreak and the ability of our medical and hospital systems to handle it. You know, I know we as a people are up to this challenge. We always have been. I know that we'll answer this moment of crisis with the best that we find in all of us because that's what Americans always do, have done and what we do. That's who we are. Ordinary people doing extraordinary things when the need arises. And today, we are moving quickly to adapt our routines to meet this challenge. Americans in three states went to the polls today. I want to thank all the public officials and the poll workers who work closely with the public health authorities to assure safe opportunities for voting, to clean and disinfect voting booths, and to make sure the voters could cast their ballots while maintaining the distance from one another that was safe. You know, it's important for us to get through this crisis, protecting both the public health and our democracy. And today, it looks like, once again, in Florida and Illinois, we're still awaiting to hear from Arizona, our campaign has had a very good night. We've moved closer to securing the Democratic Party's nomination for president. And we're doing it by building a broad coalition that we need to win in November, with strong support from the African-American community, the Latino community, high school edu people, educated people like the folks I grew up with in my old neighborhood, labor, teachers, suburban women, veterans, firefighters, and so many more. And we're doing it with a common vision. Senator Sanders and I may disagree on tactics, but we share a common vision for the need to provide affordable health care for all Americans, reduce income inequity that has risen so drastically, to tackling the existential threat of our time, climate change. Senator Sanders and his supporters have brought a remarkable passion and tenacity to all of these issues. And together, they have shifted the fundamental conversation in this country. So let me say especially to the young voters who have been inspired by Senator Sanders, I hear you. I know what's at stake. I know what we have to do. Our goal as a campaign and my goal as a candidate for president is to unify this party and then to unify the nation. You know, it's a moment like these that we realize we need to put politics aside and work together as Americans. The coronavirus doesn't care if you're a Democrat or Republican. It will not discriminate based on national origin, race, gender, or your zip code. It will touch people in positions of power as well as the most vulnerable people in our society. We're all in this together. This is a moment for each of us to see and believe the best in every one of us, to look out for our neighbor, to understand the fear and stress that so many are feeling, to care for the elderly, the elderly couple down the street, to thank the health care worker, the doctors, the nurses, the pharmacists, the grocery store cashier, and the people restocking the shelves to believe in one another. Because I assure you, when we do that, when we see the best in each of us, we lift this nation up and we'll get through this together. That's how we've always done it. 
God bless you all, and my special prayer for those of you in the front lines of the crisis, doctors, nurses, healthcare workers, caring for the virus victims and their families. My prayers are going out for everyone. My hopes are high because I believe in times of crisis, Americans have always stepped up. We have to step up and care for one another. Thank you all. Thank you all for listening. Oh, <laughs> thanks. 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 Okay.